Greetings. This is July 3rd, shortly after midnight. Now I want to take a look at some of the hot spots on the Fire Information Resource Management System just to the east of Kamloops. Before we take a look at that, I just want to let you know that these hotspot indications are not always accurate. They can be off up to a kilometer. They are multiple different systems. There's the MODIS. It's 750 meters square, but that only indicates where the detection of heat was picked up. It's not that the whole area is being consumed by fire or anything. It's only an indication. The VIIRS system is a little more accurate. Its pinpoint is about 375 meters. And again, it's not that that square is being subjected to fire. It's just that heat was detected in that square. So we'll just jump back to the MODIS system to see the difference in the accuracy. So here is the orange squares of the MODIS system. These were captured about 12 hours ago. Now we're looking at the VIIRS, that's the Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite. And its accuracy can be a little bit better depending on where that orbital path is of the satellite. So let's zoom out and take a look at some of those orbital paths. Here is a descending path at night of the VIIRS coming over Alberta and into Washington State. Then we have an ascending path happening in the daytime, and you can see it on the left-hand side of the screen, sort of coming up over the ocean. Then we have a MODIS pass that's happening again over the ocean, and this is happening at night. Then another MODIS pass. This is happening in the daytime, and you can see it kind of go up over the Rockies. Then we have another system pass that's called the Aqua. That's on a descending path. That's kind of a light blue line that comes over Alberta and goes through Idaho into Washington State. And finally, another Aqua Pass that's ascending in the daytime and it almost goes directly over Kamloops. When we zoom in, we can see that the orbital path is to the west of Kamloops. It crosses over Kamloops Lake and we can see some of the data that's being generated and that angle may throw off the data that we see from the actual location of the hotspot. But we can use this information to get a general idea of where fire may be and where heat is being generated. And on this image, we can see a hotspot that appears to be south of Penantan Lake. That's just to the right of center on the screen. Another one further right, north of Pritchard, and then over on the left hand side we can see where there are some hot spots at Valley View and in the Juniper Ridge areas. They may not be exactly in those positions but it gives an indication. So if we take this data and then combine it with what we find on Windy, for example here we see winds coming from the northwest at three kilometers and then Across the valley, winds are actually coming from the south at five kilometers. So depending on your position in relationship to those hot spots and the wind direction and wind speed, you get an idea of where the smoke is going to travel and what the level of risk may be at your position. So if we look at the forecast tomorrow at 8 p.m., it's showing in the red marker on the wind gusts 57 kilometers an hour. If you're south or east of these potential fire positions, you'll want to be aware of what is the vegetation, the terrain, what are your access routes in the area. It becomes crucial to go to the BC Wildfire Service website or download their app and go to Drive BC and find out what they're recommending as far as evacuation orders and alerts. And you'll find links there to the TNRD and other regional districts. And that can be critical in a wildfire situation. So check out the links below in the description and uh, keep yourself safe. I'd also like to take a look at what's been happening just north of Logan Lake, that's east of Tungkwa, south of Savona, and west of Greenstone Mountain Provincial Park. 
it appears to be several forested blocks. Uh, looks to be quite dense brush depending on the coloration of the vegetation in the area. There's rugged terrain in there and we're seeing both MODIS and VIIRS indications. The MODIS is just to the left of the VIIRS. So again, the infrared accuracy may vary depending on the angle of that orbital approach. So again, check at BC Wildfire and find out where the evacuation alerts and orders are. The infrared is a valuable tool to give us a general idea of where that fire line is and we can use that in combination with the wind to make a plan for ourselves but at the same time it can be obscured by smoke, cloud, haze so it's not the only source of information. You want to get multiple sources. And if we jump to windy right now, we're looking at lots of wind gusts over the weekend into next week. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, potential for thunderstorms that may bring lightning and we're seeing significant wind gusts could go up to 50 kilometers an hour coming from the west, generally from the north, northwest in this area. But uh, the wind direction is very specific to different locations depending on terrain and uh, there may be shifting wind patterns. The wildfire crews, the air crews, they've been doing an awesome job keeping this down and limiting the spread of these fire zones. But we want to be safe, we want to have a plan and make sure that we're prepared. We know our access routes, we're in touch with our neighbors and our friends. Look out for each other, keep your nose to the breeze. Thank you for watching.